Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. And happy Sunday to you. Beautiful, beautiful days out here. Super dry, but it's beautiful. And we're going to talk about Jesus today. That's what we do here. By the way, if you're not aware, this is what we do every Sunday. We, talk, we spend a few minutes, talk about Jesus, get it, dive into His Word, and try to give you a little something to encourage you along your way, um, give you some hope, give you some strength, encouragement, joy, right? Those are all things we need <laughs> to help us through our daily lives. So it's, Sunday's a really great time to uh, dive into that and and, uh, get, and grab some, some strength and some uh, energy for the upcoming week. So we're in Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, we're going to finish up Ephesians chapter 3 today, okay? And we're going to go to just two verses here. Very commonly used verses. Uh, powerful verses, by the way. Great verses to, to, to uh, dive into and to think about, remember. And but we're going to think about them in a little different way today, okay? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. It's a great verse. I mean, great two, two verses there. And we need to always remember that he's able to do imme immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. In other words, we have a measure, a full measure, right? Which is, by the way, Paul just mentioned a full measure, right? Last week we talked about a full measure and the fullness of God. And he says, because in verse 19, he said that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So a full measure, right? It's like a full cup, a full device, a full measure. The fullness of God, a full measure. So now he says, you're, but he's able to do immeasurably more. So full measure, overflowing, more. It's an immeasurable amount than all we could ask or imagine. We can ask a whole lot of things. <laughs> We just can ask a whole lot of things from, from each other, from ourselves, and from God. And we can expect a whole lot from God that we really have no right to expect. Okay? But He can do more than that. And even do more than we can imagine. That's what Paul is saying there. So, whenever time, a lot of times here lately, especially in our modern Christianity, we get to a point that we, we're in need. <laughs> Maybe we're in want. But we're in need of something. We need we need a big move of God in our lives. We need we need we need to know that God is real. We need to know that He's He loves us. That He's there. He's listening to us, and that He can work things out for our good. Which, by the way, all these things are true. Yeah. Every single one of those things are true. So when we get in that spot, we want to say, "Well, hey, He can do all. He can do a measure but more. We can ask or imagine." And some translations are different, so maybe it's quoted a little differently, but it's all the same thing, right? So we'd say, oh, he can do everything. He can do more than I can ever fathom. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, that's true. But let's not forget that there's a comma, another phrase, and then a comma. In other words, so he says that now, now to him he's able to do measurably more than all we ask or imagine. Again, everything we'd ask or think about or could possibly say, he can do it. And that's right. That's good. That's what we need. We need to understand that and take heart in that. Right? But it says, according to his power that is at work within us. All right, so let's think about that. According to his power that's at work within us, we have to realize that, yes, he does have power working within us. All of us, if you're a believer, there's power working within you, okay? His power is working within you. And that first step of his power is that you're simply saved, okay? <laughs> the, the, the fact that his, the, his Holy Spirit can come into your life, can purify you from all your sins and all your unrighteousness, that's a whole lot of stinking power to start with. So according to his power that is working within us, that power is working inside of you. No matter how you're living your life, honestly, if you're if you're a Christian, no matter if you're if maybe if you're if falling away a little bit, maybe if you're just not exactly doing what you should be doing, that power is still working within you, okay? To save you. It's still making you whole. It's still, it's still, okay? It's an active power inside of your life. Now, we get in this spot. Or say, you know, God, I'm just not, I don't think I'm ever getting anything from God. I'm, God's not working in my life. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know if he hears me. This is a weird, touchy subject, okay, for people that, um, by the way, I may not be, I may not be right, okay. My opinion is, my belief is that it's possible that maybe 
you're not taking the steps towards God and your, and your relationship with Christ and in your faith that he wants you to take. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> right? What are you talking about? You know, this isn't a works-based gospel. Correct. It's not. Okay? This is not works-based. This is grace-based. This is, you know, God's love is more than you can fathom. You can't earn it. None of that. Okay? You cannot earn it. But there is a caveat to this. I use the right word, maybe. I don't know. But there is a thing here, okay, that says that the power working within you, according to his power working within us. In other words, the closer you get to God, the better your relationship is with Jesus, the more power is going to be working inside of your life. Okay. Um, and that's evident. I've been there in my own life where maybe it's more power. Well, I felt closer to God, maybe I was doing a little more, and maybe I was in my Bible more, praying more, worshiping more, living right, better, and all of a sudden, there was more of God's power working inside of me as well, okay, that's, that's a real experience in my life, okay, the, the closer you are to Jesus, the more power is working within you. So this whole, this first thing, now to him who's able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power working within us. In other words, you, there's more, he can do more than you ask or imagine <laughs> when there's more power working inside of your life, okay? And that's not saying that you need to, that you need to be reading your Bible and, and being closer to God and have a better relationship with Jesus because that way you can get more. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, there's also a space in the place in the Bible where it says that, you ask it impure motives, okay, that you're doing something to get something and it's all you're trying to do is get something. Okay, that's this is called using God and for your own benefits and your own and your own thing. In other words, when your relationship is right with Jesus, okay, and you're and you're serving him, you're living for him, and you're doing things for him and not for yourself, okay, then there's this stuff God's gonna work. Okay. But at the same time, imagine this. You're not so dang selfish that you give a stinking care about whatever you're getting. You're getting the joy of serving God and the, the peace that you have with God, right? So, and then if something happens, hey, God's working, right? And so, hear me out here. God's always working in your favor, okay? But, and he, by the way, if you're, if you, if you're somebody who's like, well, this sounds like it's workspace. No, 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 no. No, God's not telling us that we have to do this to get this. No, 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 no. And by the way, it's a reciprocal thing, okay? He works for, he's working in your life. He, he's served you. We serve him back because he loves us. We love him. It all works together in harmony, right? And if you ever think that God's asking you to do something, by the way, that's like just ridiculous. Remember, he took the first step. Okay? <laughs> God took the first step, which is a bigger step than you can ever stick and take. All right? Uh, Jesus Christ shedding his own blood on a cross, an innocent blood, by the way, on a cross for your sins. God's son. God sacrificing his son that had his DNA. All right? So that people who didn't, who would be the enemies of, of God, could have eternal life. Yeah. All right. Well, in other words, take one of your children, <laughs> take one of your imperfect children, and tell somebody that was, that had just lived their life in a way that you hated. Well, let's face it. You hated the way they lived their life. Okay? So they've done something to you. Hey, here you go. Somebody who broke into your house. Find, find somebody who broke into your house and and took your most prized possessions. And you take your, your kid and you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to kill this kid so this, this criminal wouldn't have to go to jail. Don't think you're going to do it, are you? <laughs> right? That's what God did. <laughs> That's what God did. He took his child who had never done anything wrong. I'd done nothing but serve people and love people and heal people and raise people from the dead and set people free. Right? Done nothing. 
but, but great things, perfect human who happened to have the DNA of God, and he died, he let him die on the cross, suffer on the cross, so that people who were his enemies could live eternally with him. So he took the first step here, okay? He's asking you to reciprocate and take a step. But yes, he can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. My gosh, it's amazing the things God can do. He's able to do so much. If we are able to take a few little steps, he can take some big massive steps. But if you're not willing to get closer to him, if you're not willing to let his power work in your life more, and by the way, just because he is who he is, he's a God who loves you and cares for you and gives you more than you can comprehend just in, just in the little bit of power that, you, that we allow to work in his life, in our lives. If we don't take these steps, then we're not experiencing all God can do. We're not experiencing that amazing power that's, that can be at work in our lives. That guy, that's what Paul saying. That guy deserves all the glory and honor and praise, right? That's what he's saying here, is that to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, through all your generations, through your children, your grandchildren, and their children, and their grandchildren, and everybody else, right? To him be the glory forever. Let him get glory forever, but he can't get this glory forever in our family's lives if we're not taking these steps, right? You're not setting forth this legacy throughout all, throughout your whole family of, of, of giving God glory if we are not living these lives, if we're not training up our children, if we're not living a life appropriately. By the way, training your children is more than just, just showing them right. It's living right. It's more than just telling them right. It's living right. They're going to notice so much more in your life if you're living your life, if your life backs up what you're saying. But your life's got to back it up. Your love's got to back it up. You can't have a terrible marriage and tell your children, hey, you know what? Christ laid his life, laid his life down for us. We need to lay our lives down for our, our fellow man and serve and whatever else. When we got a terrible marriage and the husband and wife aren't getting along, because it just doesn't add up, right? Because, by the way, our relationship with Jesus is a lot like a marriage. That's why Paul talked about it a lot. Two shall become one, right? That's what Jesus said. But Paul talked about it a lot, that it's Christ in the church is like a husband and his bride because we're the bride of Christ. But all these things have to add up in order for us to have this, this reciprocal life of we're serving God and He's going to have glory throughout all generations and He's going to be able to do more than we ask or imagine. This all works together. The more you read the Bible, the more you realize it has to work together for it to work the way it says. We have to do our part in serving God and loving God and, and, and serving others and loving others and spreading this gospel and, and all this other stuff has to, has to go hand in hand. One doesn't happen without the other. And His power is at work within us, yes. He can do all we ask or imagine, yes. But there can be more power at work within us when we are living our lives like that in order for Him to get glory throughout all generations. The more you read, the more you realize it all works together. But what I do want to understand, what I want to take for this week is this. Yes, he can do all we ask or imagine. That power, according to his power, we have to live our lives in a way that his power is at work within us more often. More of his powers work within us. That his power is work within us to help others and not just help ourselves. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. We do appreciate it. If you got any prayer requests or praise reports, any kind of comments, we'd love to hear from you. Pray for you. Leave them below. All right. So again, thanks for watching. We love you guys so much. My name is Jason, and this is our Creation Homestead. God bless you, and goodbye.